Okay, here's the question. Dear Rabbi and Eliza, should someone getting older consider forgetting about marrying their soulmate and go for second best? Okay, so I, I have a like a serious conflict with the way the question is worded. Is you, you and I agree on this, yes. okay? We agree that your soulmate is the person that you marry. Correct. So, And they only become your soulmate once you get married. In that moment, right there. You get married, boom. Which means that's before your soulmate. you're married, you should ask the existential question, is this person my soulmate? Is this person my potential soulmate? Correct. Is this person my potential soulmate? Right. Once you're married, they are your soulmate. When you come from right. the altar, the chuppah, wherever you are, right. they are your soulmate now. That's you it. You married your soulmate. There's no question about it. So there, what's second best? It doesn't exist. Sec the best thing for me right now is the person that I chose. That's my life path. There, what, what does that mean, second best? I, I, think, I, I hear the question, though. There's something under that. Go ahead. You, you, you I think it. that this person is having a really hard time letting go of some of their non-negotiables. Yes. I'm not going to get my ideal vision of everything that I want. Should I choose somebody that has less than everything that I want. Exactly. Can I can I give you a practical answer? Please. 70%. We need 70% of the things that you want and and to be in alignment with who you are, your values, including things like fears, like the way that a person does or doesn't trigger you, including things like bothers, the way that somebody does or doesn't irritate you. The combination of all of that together needs to be at least a package of 70% you just good at a base. Put a, a lot of information in a little bit of Tell yeah. me if I'm break it down. <laughs> tell me if I'm if I'm right over here. If I can break it down. Yes. Um, and I'm sorry for interrupting you. If there's ten things that you want, mm -hmm. you should be focusing on seven of them. No, you should focus on all ten things that you want and figure out how somebody aligns with you. But you can't only compare what you want. And I'm not saying you get seventy percent of your list and yeah, you should be happy. You're going to get a percentage of your list, and I don't know what percentage of your list you're going to get. For sure, you need a majority of your list. Right. A majority. You you, you really do. Nobody's going to be happy with 50% of it. Let, let's just go like this. Are you going to be happy with 50% of your list? If you got 50%, would you be happy? No. I mean, it depends on what it is. Are you going to be happy with 50% of your list? You can't tell me yes. I'm not happy with 50% of anything. Okay, great. Thank you. Proved my point. You're not going to be happy with 60% either. 60%, 50% an F, 60% a D, 70% is like a C. If That's bat, like passing. If your batting average is a 60%, it's good. Okay, I, I don't know. We're not in my field, Rabbi. <laughs> no, that is the field. <laughs> That's exactly what we're talking about, the field. Okay, you're not going to hit a home run. Oh, you see? Okay, I've got ball in your lead here. You're not going to hit a home run with 50%. And this person's saying, I want to hit a home run. And if I don't hit a home run, should I settle just to get on base? Should I settle just to get married? Look at that for someone who doesn't know baseball. Okay, so I, so I know that. I just don't know batting averages. <laughs> <laughs> I know everything else. <laughs> so I want to know what's enough. What do I need? Usually people need approximately a baseline of no less than 70% of values of what they want. And in addition, not being triggered by the things that I'm inherently afraid of and not being triggered by all those irritating habits that you have that I don't love. And you're going to marry somebody that has irritating habits that you don't love. You don't have to tell me. I think your wife is fabulous, but I'm sure she has habits that you don't love. My husband has habits that I don't love. And I have habits that he for sure doesn't love. But... We all know how to cope with them. Right. We can accept them. We can live with them. And we can tolerate them. We can the manage them. No, no, over over no. the dating period. So overall, if the combination, this is really, we are getting into soulmate clarity territory. Yes. Yeah, you know. Soulmate clarity ter territory to me is how do I know if this is my person? And that's at the root of this question. How do I choose somebody who's not my home run and and... Who actually gets their home run? Not my theoretical home run. Not the home run in my mind. Yes, not my vision. You could always yes. be yes. married to somebody in your head. Yes. And if you want, I'm happy. If you tell me that you have an alter ego, we can work out a ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how I do it yet, but I know it's going to happen one day. Right. Someone's going to come to me and say, I'd like to marry my alter ego or the other <laughs> version of myself or, you know. 
You call me when that happens. <laughs> be like, see, I told you. <laughs> okay. So what we really need to deal with is how do we help this person to feel satisfied with who they're finding and the amount of goodness that's in that relationship. Yes. And wh what do you say to that? For me personally, I want to know what's on their list. I want to know what their fears are. I want to know what bothers them about the other person. I want to know what lights them up and makes them happy. And I want to know what other types of relationships they've had. If they feel like they have had a home run relationship in the past, they will always compare what they currently have to that home run relationship. And by the way, whatever they did have, which was amazing, becomes super amazing but, over time. But through my where memory. is that person now? Right. They're not in your life, but my memory of them goes, it, it's, it, let's say there yeah. were a hundred, it goes to a thousand. I, they're, they're, um, that relationship, there's nothing that can touch it. So let me just tell you, you're right. There's nothing that will ever touch that relationship. there are so many relationship. people who are married to people in their head. But until you make it your reality, if you're moving on, you're going to choose somebody who's in alignment with who you are. But you're always going to marry your person. That's it. The person you pick is, they become your person in that moment. So you're not going to marry second best. So I just want to circle back to, are you going to marry second best? Do you have to lower your standards? No, you're going to marry your soulmate. You're going to make your soulmate. How are soulmates made? In the moment you get married, they're made. That is the moment that we are made into soulmates. You're going to make your soulmate in that moment. And that's your person. And you didn't make a mistake. It's your right person. It's the best person for you. And you should go build a happy life together. And is there sometimes buyer's remorse if you want to use yes. that? Yes. And that's yes. okay. Yeah, and go get therapy. <laughs> or you, you know what? I, there's buyer's remorse, but what I tell people is if you would have if you don't bail out now and you stick for ten years and you're gonna look back and you're gonna go, Wow. If I didn't stay married for that long, I would have never known that. I would have never known how beautiful this could have been. We struggled in this moment, but that was a moment. That wasn't a lifetime yes, for us. Exactly. Yes. But it's hard. It's hard. You have to work on it. If you're a perfectionist, get over it. I know you're a little bit of a perfectionist, but you got married, so you got over it. But get over it. You have to get over it. You're not going to find perfection in marriage, in a relationship, and in a partner. And you're going to always be a work in progress. And All of us. And, All of us. And that's normal. And not only yeah. is that okay, that's the expectation. Yeah. We are always going to be figuring it out with that human being that I enjoy hanging around. That's really good advice. That's really, really good advice. Thank you. Oh, thank you, too. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>